Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for a brand new mystery with Molly. If you are new around here, if you have never seen my face on your screen before, then hi, my name is Molly. And I post true crime videos like this every single week. So if you think that that is something that you might want to stick around for, then please do subscribe. And don't forget to switch on the little notification bell so that YouTube will let you know whenever I post a new video. This week, we are going to be talking about the solved case of Philip Nicholson. He was a young man who was tragically killed coming up to seven years ago now. Philip was such a genuine and kind-hearted person who really only wanted love and friendship in his life. But unfortunately, this led to him being completely taken advantage of and horrifically abused by two evil people. Two people that he considered to be friends, but these so-called friends would go on to plan and commit his murder. So for this week's case, we are going back to the year 2015 in the town of Bournemouth, which is located in Dorset on the south coast of England. And this is Philip Nicholson. He was 22 years old at the time that this case took place and he lived in Bournemouth. Philip was born to parents Chris and Michelle Nicholson. He was an only child and growing up, Philip was always incredibly close to his family, particularly with his grandfather. He was so so close to him. Philip's mother Michelle described them as being honestly like best friends. They were inseparable. They spent a lot of time together when Philip was a child. His grandfather would often look after him whilst I think his parents were at work and they would go out and just do things together. They would go on little adventures as his grandfather used to call it. Philip was described by his family as being a very kind and caring young man. His father Chris described him as being a fantastic son who always had a smile on his face which in turn made other people smile. He was always just a very happy young boy. When Philip was still a very young child it was actually determined that he had some learning disabilities. He had global developmental delay. As stated on the Wikipedia site global developmental delay is an umbrella term used when children are significantly delayed in their cognitive and physical development. It can be diagnosed when a child is delayed in one or more milestones, categorised into motor skills, speech, cognitive skills and social and emotional development. So due to his disability as he was growing up, it did take Philip a little bit longer than other children to kind of pick up on things and learn new skills. His mother Michelle said that he always had trouble rationalising things, he struggled to understand some situations. But to be honest, he never really let his disability hold him back. In fact, in 2013, when Philip was in his early 20s, he decided that he wanted some independence in his life. Up until this point, he had always lived with his family, with his mum and his dad, but he decided that he wanted that to change. He wanted to move out. And so he did. He moved into a flat in Bournemouth and he went into supported living. And he underwent an assessment to determine what kind of things he could do independently whilst he was living on his own and what things he might have needed a bit of help and assistance with. So he was still getting his independence but at the same time he had the support of care agencies when and where he needed it. And Philip was so so excited about this next chapter in his life. This was such a big deal for him living alone for the first time and I think at first when he first moved into his flat he did really love it but over over time he did start to feel quite lonely. It must have been such a huge adjustment for him. He'd gone from always living with his family, always having people around him 24-7, to now all of a sudden living completely on his own. What he really, really wanted in his life was a girlfriend, a partner. He had always grown up kind of idolising his parents and their loving relationship and he wanted that for himself. He wanted to find someone that he could spend the rest of his life with and eventually 
actually he did meet someone he met a girl named Isabella Gosling she was just a year or two younger than Philip and the two of them met on a dating app I believe now Isabella also had some developmental issues she had atypical autism and she was also diagnosed with having two personality disorders although I'm unsure exactly what personality disorders she had I couldn't find that information online but when she and Philip started talking on this dating app they very quickly started seeing each other and things seemed to be going really well they seemed really happy together at least initially it wasn't long at all before Philip's family and adult social care services started to become quite concerned about Philip's new relationship with Isabella they were actually worried that Isabella was abusing Philip both sexually and also just just mentally and emotionally it seemed as though Isabella Gosling was a bit of a bully and she was actually using Philip using him for money she was taking his money off of him and just taking advantage of him in general really and Philip's family and his support workers did raise this with him and they said to him look Philip we're not sure that this relationship is the best thing for you we don't think that Isabella treats you the way that she should this relationship doesn't seem quite right Right. but unfortunately Philip just couldn't really see it as I said earlier his learning difficulties meant that Philip sometimes couldn't really understand certain situations and he couldn't see things or people for what they really were he didn't always get the fact that not everyone had good and pure intentions so when Isabella was doing all of these horrible things to him he didn't I guess grasp the seriousness of it he was just so happy blessing to finally have a girlfriend and so the relationship continued and so did the abuse Isabella continued treating Philip just awfully and actually it wasn't long before she started cheating on Philip just weeks after they first got together she started seeing another man at the same time his name was Richard Moores he was around 25 years old so a couple of years older than both Philip and Isabella he was often homeless he lived Lived on the streets and he did not have a very good reputation at all he was apparently a very violent man and according to sources he was actually known to the police and authorities as someone who would bully and target and be violent towards vulnerable people he was incredibly manipulative so really not a good guy and as I said Isabella was seeing both Richard Moores and Philip at the same time and when she started seeing Richard Richard, the way she treated Philip just got even worse the bullying just advanced to a whole new level she started sending Philip these horrible horrible text messages saying things like she hated him and she didn't love him and I believe Richard Moores even started doing the same he started texting Philip and sending him vile messages and in some of them they even threatened to hurt him and kill him I don't know why I have no idea what led to this bullying why they thought it was okay to do this especially to someone like Philip who was just so vulnerable and was just such a kind and caring person and just wanted friends and a girlfriend but they honestly treated Philip like their punching bag and their bank Isabella continued to steal his money she actually convinced Philip to take out another bank card in her name and she withdrew about 800 pounds from his account alongside Richard Moores and she also made Philip pay for her mobile phone she signed up for a phone contract and she used his bank account to pay for it and she got away with all of this because she was so cunning and calculated and very clever actually both she and Richard Moores were because yes a lot of the time they were truly truly awful to Philip but, but not all of the time they would constantly switch up how they treated him so one minute they were so so nasty to him they would take advantage of him they would take his money they would send him these horrible horrible messages and then the next they were nice as pie to him they would say that they wanted to hang out with him and they wanted to be friends so Philip never wanted to cut them off because when they were nice to him it was amazing he had friends he had a girlfriend which was all he ever wanted so he put up with the abuse because 
I guess in his eyes maybe it was better to have friends that were horrible and abusive sometimes than have no friends at all. But eventually as time went on and the abuse from the pair just continued and gradually got worse, Philip did stand up for himself and he said that enough was enough. He didn't want to be friends with them anymore and he didn't want to be Isabella's boyfriend if they kept treating him the way that they were. He was ready now to cut all ties with Isabella Gosling and Richard Moores but then around September of 2014 Isabella dropped a huge bombshell on Philip. She told him that she was pregnant. She was pregnant with a baby boy and that he was the father of her baby and as soon as Philip learned this news he knew that he couldn't cut off Isabella. He had to stand by her because he was now tied to her forever. She was going to be the mother of his child and he wanted to be involved in this child's life, heavily involved. He was actually so over the moon about this pregnancy. He was so excited at the thought of having his own little family. That was something that he'd always dreamed of having. However, Isabella didn't just tell Philip that he was the father. She said the same thing to the other man that she was seeing, Richard Moores. She told both of them that they were the baby's dad. And to be completely honest, I don't know which one actually was. There really isn't much information online at all that I could find anyway about this baby and this pregnancy. So I'm not 100% sure if Isabella even was pregnant or if she maybe just lied and said that she was for some reason. And if she was pregnant, I don't know who the biological father actually was. Perhaps she herself didn't know who the father was. We know that she was seeing both Richard and Philip at the same time. So maybe she genuinely didn't know which one of them had gotten her pregnant. And so instead of doing a paternity test to find out, she just told them that they were both the dad. But ultimately she decided that the person she wanted to raise this baby with was Richard Moores and he wanted that too. He wanted this little family with Isabella and he wanted Philip out of the picture. He saw Philip as his rival. They'd both been I guess competing for Isabella's love and attention and now Richard saw them as competing for this baby as well. And I have no doubt that Isabella was absolutely loving that. She loved the fact that these two men both wanted her. Who knows, maybe that's why she told both of them that they were the dad to keep them both interested. And of course, neither man backed down or backed away. Philip was ready to back away because of the abuse that he was enduring. But now that Isabella was pregnant and he was led to believe that the baby was his, there was no way that he was going to leave now. He had to stay for his child. And so the mistreatment of Philip just continued. Richard and Isabella would verbally attack him both in person and over text message. They would be aggressive and violent towards him and Philip just felt like he had to put up with it because he wanted to be in this baby's life. Although saying that, according to sources, Philip did go to the police, I think a couple of times. He reported Isabella and Richard because of the abuse but it doesn't appear as though much was really done. No action was really taken by the police. They didn't even pay a visit to Isabella and Richard following the reports according to one article. And so they got away with the abuse and when Isabella and Richard found out that Philip had gone and filed these police reports, they would threaten him and they would say, we're not going to have anything to do with you anymore if you keep going to the police about us. And over time, Philip's family these concerns for him and his welfare just grew enormously. They saw such a huge change in Philip. When Philip first moved out and into his own flat, he was happy. He was excited. As I said earlier, he was looking forward to being independent. I think he really thrived when he first moved out. He looked after himself. He looked after his new home. He kept it clean and tidy. But gradually, this all started to just completely go downhill. He no longer really cleaned his flat. It was always just a mess. He didn't look after himself anymore. He would hardly eat anything so he was losing quite a bit of weight and this is something that is seen a lot in victims of abuse. Often they will just stop 
taken care of themselves. They won't care as much for personal hygiene and stuff like that because their confidence has just been knocked so much. And his family noticed this and they would keep saying to him, you need to leave Isabella, you need to get away from her. But Philip refused, he wouldn't. She had that control over him because of the pregnancy. And Isabella and Richard clearly knew that Philip's family were trying to get him away from them and so they tried to do the opposite. They tried to get him away from his family. There were a few occasions where his family, I think specifically his father Chris, received some text messages from Philip's phone. Really horrible text messages saying things like, I hate you, I don't want you in my life, I don't want to see you. And of course, none of these were sent by Philip. They were sent by Richard and Isabella. They would steal his phone and send these messages to his family because they wanted to completely isolate Philip from his loved ones. But on the 4th of May 2015, Philip went on a day out with his family. They went to Harry Potter World and they had a really, really lovely time. Philip absolutely loved spending time with his parents. He really enjoyed himself. However, his parents did notice throughout the day that Philip's phone just kept going off constantly, he kept getting text messages coming through. And they asked him who who is that? Who keeps messaging you? And Philip just kind of played it off and he said, oh, it's no one, it doesn't matter. However, what his parents later found out was that it was Isabella and Richard. They were harassing him pretty much all day when he was just trying to have a nice time with his family. They couldn't even let him have that. They couldn't let him have a few hours of peace. In fact, one of the messages Richard Moore sent to Philip that day said something along the lines of, you better start digging your own grave because I'm gonna murder you. And these threats of murder just increased even more around this time. Richard was constantly telling Philip that he was going to kill him. And it's believed that the reason for this was because of something that Isabella had told him. Around this time in May of 2015, Isabella Gosling told Richard Moores that Philip had raped her. Now, I'm not going to sit here and call Isabella a liar, but I will say that the police have said that they believe this allegation is not true. They believe it to be unfounded. They investigated it and they found absolutely no evidence to suggest that this ever happened. They don't believe that Philip ever raped Isabella. But regardless, she told Richard Moores that he had, and it's believed that she did this to almost egg him on to give Richard more of a reason to be violent towards Philip. And it did have that exact effect. Richard continued to terrorize Philip. The abuse just continued. He would continue to send him death threats. He would follow him and chase him. One day, again, this was in May of 2015, Philip actually had an accident whilst he was on a bus. He wet himself because Richard Moores had been chasing him and he was so scared. There were a number of occasions where Richard and Isabella would literally hold Philip hostage. They would trick him into coming over to Isabella's flat. She had her own flat in Bournemouth and Isabella would send Philip a message saying like, can you come to mine? I need to speak to you about something urgently. So Philip would go over and Richard would be there as well and they wouldn't let him leave. They would actually try to force Philip into making a confession. They wanted him to confess to raping Isabella. On one of these occasions when Philip was held hostage, he actually climbed out of one of the windows in Isabella's flat and he managed to escape. And he ran to a hotel wearing just a t-shirt. I'm guessing Richard and Isabella took the rest of his clothes from him. He went to this hotel and he asked the staff there to help him and they gave him some food and a drink and they contacted his parents, Michelle and Chris, who then picked him up. But unfortunately, this wasn't an isolated incident. As I said, it happened a few times. Richard and Isabella held Philip hostage on a couple of occasions. Philip was so vulnerable and they knew exactly how to manipulate him to get him to do what they wanted. A few times they tricked him saying that there was a girl that they knew, a friend of theirs named Amy, and that she was really interested in Philip and she wanted to meet him and go on a date with him. And they would tell Philip 
Philip to meet this Amy at a certain place at a certain time and he would be there waiting for hours and hours and hours for her to show up but, but she never did because it was all a lie it was just another cruel trick by Richard and Isabella a lot of the time they would tell Philip that he could meet this Amy at Isabella's flat they would tell him to come round so that he could meet her and so he did but of course she was never there and when Philip arrived he would be attacked by Richard and Isabella. They would hit him and beat him up, they would of course verbally abuse him, shout at him, call him horrible names but again as I mentioned earlier on in the video they didn't treat him this way all the time. For a while they were so nasty and vile and abusive and then all of a sudden they were nice again and they acted like his friends, his friends who wanted to help him find a new girlfriend. And then at the end of May 2015, Richard Moores and Isabella Gosling lured 22-year-old Philip Nicholson to Isabella's flat once again. However, this time would actually be the last because now they decided to turn all of their death threats towards Philip into a reality. Richard and Isabella decided that they were finally going to murder him. Early in the morning on the 26th of May 2015, Isabella Gosling began ringing and texting Philip, telling him to come and meet her and Richard. Once again, informing him that their friend Amy was with them and that he should come and join them. And so Philip agreed. He again believed them and he believed that this might have been an opportunity to meet someone and start dating someone new someone that would hopefully treat him the way that he deserved to be treated and not how Isabella had treated him. So Philip met Richard and Isabella in the town centre of Boscombe in Bournemouth and it's believed that there they managed to convince Philip to come back to Isabella's flat where Amy was waiting. Her flat was located in Mallard Grange on Sea Road in Bournemouth and so all three of them began walking back to the flat and they were actually caught on CCTV during the journey. Richard and Isabella were walking in front and Philip was just behind them. He's the one wearing the red shirt. And actually a lot of people, including detectives and Philip's family, believe that Philip was very, very scared. They could just tell from looking at the CCTV. Just the way in which he was and the way that he was walking, they could tell that he was very apprehensive. He wasn't walking alongside Richard and Isabella he was walking behind them almost like he was frightened and nervous and unsure as to whether he should actually go with them but sadly he did they carried on walking and when they arrived at the flat and they walked inside Philip would have realized that this was just another one of Richard and Isabella's twisted and cruel tricks once again there was no sign of this Amy and pretty much as soon as they got Philip inside and behind closed doors the pair attacked him. They began shouting at him, beating him, and the whole thing was actually recorded. Isabella got out her phone and recorded this horrific ordeal. The audio recording was around 17 minutes long and it captured the last 17 minutes of Philip Nicholson's life. They completely tortured Philip during these 17 minutes. They were beating him and again trying to get him to confess to raping Isabella and the whole time Philip was just pleading with them to stop, just stop hurting him. He was literally begging for his life but they didn't stop. They just continued with the abuse and then towards the end of the recording Isabella said to Richard Moore something along the lines of go on, do what you need to do. And I believe it was following this when Richard Moores grabbed a knife and stabbed Philip. He stabbed Philip twice in the back of the neck. And as Philip lay there dying, Richard Moores was heard on the recording saying, quote, are you paralyzed yet? Have you stopped breathing yet? Please do, because no one will miss you. And Philip's final words before he passed away were, quote, please stop. I just want to be friends. They were the last words that he ever spoke before he died as a result of the stab wounds to his neck, which is just one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever heard. Even in his final moments, even after they beat him and stabbed him, 
he still just wanted to be their friend. Following his death, it's believed Richard and Isabella tried to stage the scene to make it look like a suicide. They wanted it to appear as though Philip had done this to himself. He stabbed himself in the back of the neck twice. So they left the murder weapon, the knife, at the scene and then they left and they started walking away from the flat and they were captured by CCTV walking away holding hands. Which just completely blows my mind that they can do what they just did. They can torture and kill a vulnerable young man and then just leave and walk away and hold hands. It's truly sickening. They were also captured on CCTV after the murder on a bus. They got on a bus, they sat down, and Richard Moores can be seen putting his arm around Isabella like he's comforting her. They took the bus to Weymouth, which is just under 40 miles away from Bournemouth, so clearly they were trying to go on the run. And it turns out that later that day, the same day as the murder, this evil couple actually got engaged. Richard Moores got on one knee and he proposed to, to Isabella. He asked her to marry him and she said yes. And if that isn't one of the most wild and twisted things you've ever heard, they literally got engaged just hours after they killed someone. That just shows you how disconnected they were from the crime, how little they cared about what they had done, how insignificant it was to them. The fact that they can torture and then stab someone to death and then just hours later decide to get married is absolutely insane. Philip's dead body was found in Isabella's flat the same day that he was killed. He was murdered on the morning of the 26th of May and I believe his body was discovered later around midday. I'm unsure on the circumstances that led to his body being found but I do know that it was the police that found him. They went into the flat and discovered his body. So I'm guessing that neighbours must have contacted the authorities or something perhaps they heard the murder take place they heard Philip shouting and screaming and so they called 999 but when he was found and he was identified obviously officers were sent to inform Philip's family of his passing and it didn't take long at all for the police to identify the main suspects in this case they knew that the perpetrators were Richard Moores and Isabella Gosling I mean Philip was found murdered in Isabella's flat. So the pair were very quickly tracked down. The police found out that they went to Weymouth and they were arrested and taken to the police station to be questioned. And unbelievably, Isabella tried to deny everything. She said that she had absolutely nothing to do with Philip's murder. She actually blamed Richard entirely. She said that it was all him and she even pretended that she was upset because Philip was her friend, her good friend. And so after she was charged at her plea hearing, she pleaded not guilty, which meant that a trial had to go ahead. But I mean, how she thought she was ever going to get away with this is completely beyond me. There was a huge, huge amount of evidence against her. Firstly, the victim's body was found in her flat, in her bedroom actually, that's where the attack took place. I believe the murder weapon, the knife, had her fingerprints on it. There was CCTV footage of her and Richard Moores picking Philip up from Boscombe and then leading him to her flat. And of course, the biggest and most damning evidence of all were was the recording, the audio recording on her mobile phone. She made the decision to record the last 17 minutes of Philip's life and she was heard on the recording egging Richard on. She told him to do what he needed to do, encouraging Richard to stab Philip and at one point on the recording she even asked Philip to get off of her bed because he was bleeding on it and making a mess. She was more concerned about the fact that he was bleeding on her bed than the fact that he was literally dying 
in front of her. There was no way any jury was going to find her not guilty of this crime and so of course at the end of her trial she was convicted of murder. She was convicted in December of 2015, just six months after Philip's death. 20 year old Isabella Gosling was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 19 years. 25 year old Richard Moores on the other hand actually confessed. I think straight away as soon as he was arrested he admitted what he had done and so when it came to his court proceedings he pleaded guilty to murder and he was also given a life sentence. He was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 22 years. Following Philip's murder it was decided that there would be a domestic homicide review and a safeguarding adult review into his death to determine whether any failings were made by agencies that were involved in Philip's care because Philip was a very vulnerable young man and like we talked about towards the start of the video his learning disabilities meant that when he moved out and he started living on his own he went into supported living he was supposed to be checked up on and monitored by like social care agencies so how did this still happen Philip was being horrifically abused in the last few months of his life by his killers but could these agencies not have prevented it since they had a duty of care to fill it? Well that is what the review had to investigate whether or not the organisations involved in Philip's life could have done more and worked more effectively to protect him from his abusers. The review was completed in 2017 and it concluded that yes opportunities to intervene in Philip's relationship with Isabella and Richard were missed by professionals and authorities including the police. Opportunities that ultimately could have prevented Philip's death in 2015. I actually came across a really informative article which detailed different um, agencies involvement in Philip's care and mistakes that were made by them. So I will leave that linked down below in case any of you guys want to go and read it but I have a quote from it here which I think sums up the results of the review quite well. So it states professionals had quote the knowledge legal means and opportunity to prevent the 2015 murder of a young adult with learning disabilities but did not take the steps to do so. A joint safeguarding adult review and domestic homicide review has found the combined investigation by Bournemouth and Pool Safeguarding Adults Board and Pool Community Safety Partnership identified quote a lack of watchfulness and alertness in respect of Philip Nicholson's adult safeguarding plan which was delayed and was not updated to reflect changes to his situation. I also have a quote to read from the chair of the Bournemouth and Pool Safeguarding Adults Board, Barry Cook. He said about the review, quote, it was tragic that Philip lost his life in these circumstances and I would like to express the board's sincere condolences to his parents and wider family. It was crucial that this combined independent review was carried out in order to fully examine the events leading up to Philip's death and explore each agency's involvement during that time. This was a very complex case and through this independent and very detailed process all agencies involved have identified areas for learning. Actions have been taken as a matter of priority to ensure that circumstances leading to deaths such as this are prevented from happening again in the future. I believe in total the Safeguarding Adults Review report made 13 recommendations, 13 things that needed to change in order to prevent anything like this from ever happening again. Philip's family also made a statement following the results of the review and they said, sadly and upsettingly it has become evident throughout these investigations that significant failings and omissions were made by those organisations involved in Philip's care which we strongly believe could have prevented his death. We support the findings of the report and the lessons that need to be learnt but it provides us with no comfort having lost Philip. My heart really goes out to the Nicholson family. This is such an incredibly tragic and heartbreaking case. What Philip went through, not just on the day that he died, but in the months leading up to it is just unimaginable. The terror that he experienced is just 
unimaginable and I can't I can't wrap my head around why this is one of those cases where there just doesn't even seem to be a motive it's just truly sickening what they did and I'm glad that they are going to be in prison for a long time but that is it for this case that is the case of Philip Nicholson as always please do let me know your thoughts and opinions on the case in the comments I would love to hear what you guys think also let me know of any other cases that you would like to see me cover on this channel again you can let me know in the comments or alternatively I do have a case request form linked in the description box and yeah thank you all so so much for watching please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you again next week for another mystery with Molly